What is up guys, my name is Matt Workman for Cinematography Database and today we're going to be continuing our Cinematography Composition 201 series. We've already looked at Panning and Tilt and we've looked at Dolly and now we're going to be adding in the Jib. The same amazing, beautiful, emotional scene of a man walking from his front door to two trash cans. We're going to cover that with a Jib. Let's do it. Okay, so here we are in Cine Designer once again and I'm going to take you through the building process of building some of these cameras. So we picked a camera. We're going to pick a Jimmy Jib head and we're also going to pick a Jimmy Jib arm and we're going to pick a Jimmy Jib base. Now, if you've never heard of a Jimmy Jib, well, you'll see it now, at least in 3D. So we build that. Cine Designer puts it all together and it makes it all one little rig over here. So it builds it all out. So let's Let's zoom right in here. Let's figure out what all this stuff is that we just did. So right here at the end, this bit here, this is the Jibby Jib head. It's a two axis head. And so let's do this. Let's, uh, let's look through it. Let's actually look through that camera. It's gonna be the red Epic. And um, so this is right now a red Epic in 6K HD at a 25 mil. So that's pretty normal. So we grab the head here and just to show you a little bit of, uh, oops, uh, what this thing does. I think we can all kind of guess, but anyway, uh, this jib is going to have, oh, that's not what we want. I grabbed the wrong thing. Uh, it's going to have panning. So just like a regular tripod head, this pans, except it's being done remotely by a controller in the back or wheels, if they're that cool. Um, and not only does it pan, but of course it tilts. And it tilts in a slightly different way than a normal tripod, but essentially it's doing uh, the same effect. So we've got pan and tilt. And that's what the head is doing. And as we back out, we see the head at the end. So that's doing the panning and the tilting. But we also see this big arm here. And this is really the jib part. There's a lot of different types of arms. Fisher jibs, foxy jibs, cranes. There's a lot more. If I thought about it, I could think of more. I've modeled them all in 3D. I should know them. But anyway, this jib arm pans. So just like uh, a camera head pans or a tripod head, I call this panning. This is panning the arm also could be called swinging, swinging the arm. So let's look through the camera as we do that. And what's happening is that we're physically moving the camera, right? So what typically happens for this type of jib anyway, is that as you pan the arm or swing the arm, the head comes along with it. So technically you're kind of panning the head too, but you can, uh, you can basically operate the pan of the head and the pan of the arm separately, and that's going to give you different options. I'll look at this from above, not directly above, but a little bit more above, and you can see that it's going to make an arc, right? So this is not moving the camera in a straight line like the dolly, it's moving it in an arc. So let's come back down to earth, come back over here, whoop, oh, too far, too far, there it is. I'm going to zoom in a little bit again, and not only can the, the arm pan, it can also tilt. And this is what I call booming, so booming down, booming up. Booming down, booming up. So panning and tilting the arm move the physical location of the camera. In this case, it's also affecting the rotation of the camera, but typically the rotation of the camera is handled by the head. If we look at it from the side, it's very similar. You can tell that the camera is actually moving in an arc. It's not moving straight up and down. Uh, that is going to be more pronounced, especially the smaller, the jib arm. But what we can do here, uh, because I've built these all out, as I can back this way up, oh, wrong thing. I can back this whole jib just way up. I'm gonna have to zoom out even more here. And what we can do is that this Jimmy jib happens to come in a bunch of different sizes. So this is the six foot size. That's nine feet, 12 feet, 15 feet, 18 feet. Yes, people own all these extensions, 24, and the max is 30, which is like gigantic. And this is a bit of math and geometry. If you look at the 30 foot one, because the radius of the circle is basically so much taller right here, when we're, when we're um, booming up and down with such a long jib, the amount that it's moving back and forth, the, the amount that it's uh, arcing is a lot less. So the longer the jib, the less arc is going to be happening on both pan and tilt. But there are some practical real, um, real world things that are going to make that um, a little bit more annoying than a shorter jib. Things like beam bend, wind, inertia, 
those things don't, aren't really taken into account in Cine Designer, but what I'm gonna show you now is three different camera moves covering this same scene that we've done before using the jib, and hopefully it illustrates some basic examples of why you would use a jib in the, instead of a dolly or just panning and tilting. I think it's pretty obvious, but hopefully it's still entertaining and educational. Okay, so we are outside of this uh, guy's house and he's leaving the house and going to the trash can. Nothing crazy, but let's cover it in a couple different ways. Let me bring this up here. So here's our first move we're gonna do, and this is going to be just a boom up. This could actually be done with a Fisher dolly, but we're gonna be showing it with a jib. And I think that this is gonna be a pretty good point of view for the BTS. And let's look through the actual camera over here. This is camera A. And we're gonna start low on the trash cans and we're gonna boom up over them to reveal the person. So we're booming up, we're booming up. There he is and we land in this wonderful medium shot just like that. Uh, this is something again that could be done with a Fisher dolly with just the pneumatic arm, but it's also a really good thing to have a jib for. Really solid, really solid shot. Uh, I do stuff like this all the time. You wouldn't necessarily um, use this entire move. You might edit in like, like edit in here, and then he walks into it, and then we cut right to a close-up or something like that. So it may not be this entire shot in the actual project, but this move does a lot. It reveals the person and shows the trash can if that does anything for your story. So let's do another camera move. Cool, so this is camera B. This is gonna be our second shot, and you can see that we're gonna start with the jib in the air. So the arm is both uh, tilted up or boomed up, and it's also uh, a little bit uh, panned in or swung in. You can see a little bit here. And what we're gonna do is as the person walks forward, we are going to swing back and then also boom down at the same time to land about there. So you can tell by the arc of the camera, I'll come up from kind of an overhead shot like this to kind of show the, the path of it a little bit better. Uh, you'll see that because we've swung the, uh, the camera and the arm over the trash cans, that this wouldn't really be possible with a dolly or even a gimbal or anything like that, really without some like kind of trickery. Uh, the jib allows us to go over objects. So in this case, we're moving the camera over these trash cans, like physically over it. So that's something that's unique about a jib. And we're also changing heights, which uh, we'll look from here again. We're going from, I don't know, like 10 feet in the air to about like three feet in the air. So we're, we're moving the camera over a trash can and we're also changing the height from pretty high to pretty low, all in the same shot. And the camera is gonna pan and tilt to keep the talent in frame. So let's look at what the shot actually looks like. Let's go to the beginning. We're keeping him on the right third. We're still keeping him on the right third. And then we reveal the trash cans, kind of wonky. And then he lands like this in the medium, kind of similar to the ending of all the other shots we've done. So let's look at one more example. It's a little bit out there, but it's a pretty cinematic shot in my opinion. I like it a lot. And in a lot of cases, this, what, this is what techno cranes and jibs are for. It's just getting the camera really high and doing some Funny stuff, let's look at it. So for our third and final example here, we've busted out the 30 foot Jimmy Jib, which is pretty tall, it's gonna let you get pretty high. Uh, I didn't do it here, but this base could actually go higher to allow it to tilt even further up in the air, but uh, in this case, I just left the base the way it was. And what we've essentially done is put this camera almost directly over the trash cans here. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna boom down slightly and we're going to be uh, doing some panning. And what happens if I zoom up into here, what happens with a remote head like this, if you're pointing straight down, meaning you're tilting down, what happens is that the pan axis turns into the roll axis, which we actually haven't covered yet, but it essentially takes the image and does this with it. Watch usually takes a special third axis head, which we can look at in further episodes. It's kind of more of a really advanced thing. It's not very uh, common on any production, but basically when you tilt down 90 with a remote head, the pan becomes the roll. So that's what we're looking at here. It's not super important, but as you get to doing jib moves, um, I think that you'll, you'll start to realize uh, the different possibilities there are with it. So let's look at the behind the scenes of it first. See if we can kind of guess what this move looks like. So we're starting above the trash cans and we're pulling up and we're panning or we're really rolling. So let's look what it looks like through the camera. Go back to the beginning. So we start in this kind of abstract shot above of the trash cans and it kind of rotates and, and normalizes itself out as the talent walks in. I think it's a pretty cool shot. I actually like it a lot. Pat on the back, I like this shot, it's kinda cool. You know, you can picture this being like the intro to a movie or something, and it's, a, it's an interesting point of view. Uh, pretty simple move, and one of the clear reasons that you would use a 30 foot Jimmy Jib is to do something like this. You can't do this really any other way besides like a jib or a techno crane 
with a remote head. And just so you guys know the stats, this is going to be, uh, we're looking through a virtual red Epic 6K HD at 21 millimeters. So it's a pretty wide lens, even though we are, um, you know, fairly high off the ground, you're gonna still need, even with a 6K camera, which has kind of a, a bigger aperture, it's still a 21. So this is a wide shot. So that's really like a, a 16 mil or even kind of a 12 mil on like a normal 35 millimeter sensor. So that wraps it up for this episode of Cinematography Composition 201. Again, we've looked at pan and tilt, dolly, jibbing. We're gonna look at techno cranes, and then we're gonna look at gimbals and steady cams. Uh, and this is just so that we can really get over the terminology and some basic examples of why we'd use these different tools. And eventually we will be moving into the real world and in Cine Designer, and we'll be looking at entire scenes and we'll try to figure out the meanings behind them. Of course, it's very subjective. This is where directing comes into play, where the choice of camera angles, how that affects the narrative, that's kind of the director's job and the DP's there to support and help if they need to. But what's important, especially in the beginning, is to understand the different tools the names of moving them and why you might use them. And this should give you a good overview of examples. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a like, share it with some of your friends, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing the rest of this series. And in the comments below, what's your favorite type of jib? Is it a Kessler jib? Do you work with a Jimmy jib? Have you ever used a Fisher jib? Are you in the UK, you're using like, was it the giraffe? Or the GFM cranes or jibs? What's your favorite jib? I would love to know. If I don't have it in Cine Designer. I'll be adding it to Cine Designer. You guys get out there and plan better. I almost forgot what to do. Plan better, shoot better.